What's up, fantasy managers? This is the smashes and crashes. We'll talk about the players that went nuclear on your team. We'll talk about the players that busted on your team. And we'll also talk about players to trade for or trade away. Which players are those? Stick around for seven seconds. You can do it! What's up, zoners? This is Tyler, Big Turd Ward, and Jason, the lucky bastard youth of coming at you live from the West Coast. And this is the Fantasy Red Zone. Today, Jason, we got our smashes and our crashes. That is, uh, you know, who boomed, who bust, and dude, so many busts, Jason. And that's not just from the injuries. There was a bloodbath this week, and we will talk about that, dude. Waiver wire is like going new. I'm just thinking, man, the waiver wire was so weak, week one. Hopefully you saved a lot of your money, dude, because this week is going nuclear. And uh, Jason, we got the news for you. We've got trade targets, man. I've got like what? I've got like six people that you want to trade for. I've got four people you want to trade away, some big names. So stick around for that. And Jason, we need help. This show needs help, man. Please. So uh, could you please tell the public how they can help this show? Because we need it. Uh, Yeah, if you made it this far and enjoy two friends talking about fantasy football, then please hit the sub. Press the like. We like the likes. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think about the smashes or crashes for any of these players on your team. Are you going to try to trade for any of these targets? Players? Are you going to try to trade away? Uh, we're also on uh, the radio on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And we also got a Patreon. So if you're feeling uh, pretty generous, you got you know you did a little bit over time, you got a big paycheck, and you want to donate to some poor people, we're right here. We're talking <laughs> right to you. We're looking right at you, man. We're your boys. Uh, yeah um all right jason let's get in to the news oh you know what before real fast i do want to say i am undefeated in all of my leagues jason right now four no i'm only in two leagues if you're in a dynasty league man invite us next year we want it but right now dude four no undefeated in the listener league dude you listeners can't beat me small third jamie uh but jason i just want to point that out real fast nice <laughs> All right, man, let's get into the news. Bryce Young, bench for Andy Dalton. And uh, you're like, I mean, you're, you see Caleb Williams getting pressured left and right, man. K- uh, Bryce Young, dude, this week only pressured on four of 29 dropbacks, Jason. That was the lowest rate of any starting quarterback. So uh, Dave Canales saw that, watched the tape. He's like, dude, I don't even know how to fix this guy. He's not even getting pressured. I watched the, uh, did you see that that clip of him like almost breaking down into tears after that interception? No, I don't think I want to watch that. Oh, dude, he made the he made like the ugly cry face real fast, <laughs> like from Dawson's Creek. <laughs> yeah, from like Dawson's Creek, or those two girls that are like always pointing at the cat or whatever at the table in that meme. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's one of my favorite memes of all time. <laughs> I, I love that. I was like, I think it is you, man. You always send me this shit. I'm like, what? What is this? Uh, okay, so anyways, um, Andy Dalton to oh. me, Jason. Yes. We'll talk about this later, but it makes me want to, you know, restart all of my Panthers. And I'm going to, I'm interested to see how this, because you, I was like going to start everybody against them, every defense against them. We might need to reevaluate with a real NFL quarterback as their quarterback. Yeah. You can tell Bryce Young just doesn't have the confidence, man. You can tell he's out there. He's a, a teenager amongst men. <laughs> um, he's 31st in yards per attempt. And he's also 31st in completion percentage in a clean pocket. In a clean pocket, he's still dead last. So, he's, you know he's back there. He's in his head. Doesn't have the confidence. Uh, I, I do think with Andy Dalton now, you know, he's a veteran quarterback. The What do they call him? The 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 rocket, the redhead the red rocket, rocket bomber, whatever. Um, the, or the water pistol. is like the red water pistol, the red rocket, all kinds of stuff. A water pistol. Pistol Pete. I call him <laughs> Pistol Pete. But hey. uh, city slick ass. But anyways, yeah. Uh, I don't know how much of a jump these players are going to get, but they are going to get a bump in fantasy value. Heck yeah, dude. Um, I'm super pumped on my Jonathan Brooks, but we will talk about that in a little bit. Jason, Isaiah Pacheco to IR with a broken fibula. I did not say tibula. Kareem Hunt is visiting Jason tomorrow. So Tuesday, that's uh, when this video comes out. Six to eight weeks, it looks like for a CEH, or or, or, six to eight weeks for Pacheco. I thought that was going to be longer than that. So that's good news for Pacheco owners. But dude, when he comes back, man, if they get Kareem Hunt, uh, they're going to have steel a lot more integrated into the team. And uh, Jason CEH is, could return as soon as week five. 
So I think that this backfield just turned into something I do not want a part of. If I had to have one piece, Jason, I would probably say, I bet you Kareem Hunt automatically goes there and becomes a goal line back. And he had like, a, how many touchdowns did he have last year? Like seven or something like that? Yeah. It'd be crazy if Kareem Hunt goes back to Kansas City after they let him go because of the, he, the he beat that, down. He kicked that chick, man. <laughs> A little drop kick maneuver that he did in a hotel, but yeah, this was possibly the worst thing that could happen to fantasy managers. It's like he was playing well, right? Then he get over like 15 points again. I can't remember at the top of my head, but uh, then he goes and breaks his leg, and so now they got to bring in additional help, and he's going to come back. And like you said, Tyler, there's probably going to be four of the running backs on this roster where before it was like just him. So if he gets Kareem Hunt, if Kareem Hunt goes there, it's over. Dude, trade away Pacheco. Trade him away. Yeah. I, I would want steal out of all of them. Sorry, my dog banjo is going crazy. Uh, He's got to quit fumbling, man. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, I, could, I would not be surprised if P Ryan, came, P. Ryan came in and actually did pretty well. But, Jason, I mean, there are so many people. There's just so much. I thought they might bring back Jarrett McKinnon, dude, off the streets. Um, and then you have him coming back. He's not even gone for the whole season, man, six to eight weeks. And he's gonna, when he comes back, he's going to be so he's going to be injured, and like they want to save him for the playoffs, Jason. So I don't know, man. This just took a took a huge hit, and to me, man, number one running backs like workload workhorse running backs are even getting rarer and rarer as this year goes on, man. Yeah. Um, and then here we go, Jason Cooper Cup, man, to miss a significant amount of time, candidate for IR. You saw him in a walking boot after the last week two. Which wide receiver to own? I was reading an article. <clears throat> about uh, how Jordan Whittington actually filled in those routes, the same routes that Cooper Cup was running after he left the game, and he had two targets for 20-something yards. So I would still take the flyer on Whittington, Jason, because I think he's, he's the only one with the upside of uh, wide receiver two for you. Yeah, Demarcus Robinson and Tutu Atwell led the Rams with uh, four targets each. One had seven points. I think the other one had like five I don't know what Johnson got, but yeah, I did see that Winnington got two targets for 22 yards. But yeah, so he was so far down on the depth chart, but now their main wide receivers are gone. They're going to have to play this guy. He's definitely going to be in the rotation now. Yeah, I would take Whittington, um, you know, pre- preseason breakout star. And Cooper Cup was, he was under Cooper Cup's wing, man. He was teaching him everything. So he's going to hopefully fill that role for maybe, I don't know, four weeks. And then um, Jason, Miami did sign that, you know, Tyler Huntley from uh, the Ravens. So I went back and checked out how what he did, you know, in his uh, last full start. 146 yards and a touchdown with eight rushing attempts. We do not want him starting. If you are Tyreek owner, man, or any, a Waddle owner or anything, you do not want Tyler Huntley. We do want um, Skylar Thompson. Skylar Thompson gave uh, Tyreek Hill 15 targets one game, dude. So I do not like the Tyler Huntley signing fantasy-wise for Miami, Jason. When Huntley did start for the Ravens those, like, a couple years ago in the playoffs, that dude hyper targeted Isaiah Likely. So oh, there you go. Yeah, I didn't got, look at the playoff games. I uh, I just went to his game log, you know, and they don't show playoff games. Right. It is uh, and Juno Smith. <laughs> or, hey man, Jason Mixon. I watched that and immediately I was like high ankle sprain, dude. Um, so he's getting an MRI today. I think it's. I'm almost guaranteed it's a high ankle sprain. It just matters on what grade. So that could be up to like what four weeks. Um, Joe Mixon. I mean, if it's only a high ankle sprain, I recommend. Trying to trade for him after this. He's not on the trade for list right now. Uh, but, Jason, uh, that was on a hip drop tackle. Did you see that? No, but you know what? I thought that tackle was outlawed, man. I thought you couldn't do there's it no been, more. So there's been five of them so far that were blatant, and two injuries have come from those. I can't remember what the other one was, if it was Jordan Love or what. So it is still against the rules to do that. Because I see it yeah, like every been, play, there, I feel like. There's been zero flags, dude. There's been all these fucking flags on, um, you know, uh, improper alignments. Yeah. Illegal, uh, illegal, illegal alignment formation. Number 72, yeah, offense. Formation, thank you. But, Jason, how did you feel about Cam Akers? Did you see Cam Akers last night? He looked good. He looked good in uh, the preseason as well. I don't know if I'm about ready to get a ticket on that train again. You traded for him, right? That one time? <laughs> no, I did not trade for him. <laughs> I did not trade for him at all. No, you traded you traded him away. I traded him away and picked up Kyron Williams and off the of waivers. Yeah, and then I, oh yeah, and then I think he got uh, kicked off the team and then people are like, "You screwed me, Jason." <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, because it was like the next week they traded him to the Vikings, I think. Yeah, yep. dude. And then uh, here we go, Jason. Malik Neighbors saw two thirds of New York's targets, man, in week two. Uh, since 2011, only Sammy Watkins in week nine of 2015 was able to match that. He saw eight of 12 targets. So the guy, you know, threw, threw the ball 12 times. So that's what happened. Dude, Neighbors saw 18 of a possible 27. So this is what we saw, man. This is what the rumblings were coming out of preseason. And um, he has done this to Wandell Robinson before, but Wandell Robinson was not the talent of Malik Neighbors. So both Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. broke out this week, Jason. Yeah, that's a uh, that's why I had Malik Neighbors ranked a, a little high because he had, he had a good matchup, dude. This week, oh, dude. It was... if you want to stream anybody, dude, right now the two teams that we know are terrible on defense: Washington and uh, the Giants, and they played each other last week. And the Colts. Oh, yeah. dude, I, I need to write down the Colts shit. It's typed out somewhere. All right, man. Uh, next up, Godwin is the only wide receiver, fantasy wide receiver, to score twenty plus points in both weeks uh, of this year. He was my start of the week. I messed up on a couple of my other star and another sit, Jason. I did not. I think I was 50-50 this week. Not great. But Godwin, man, he is, I think, is going to be the more reliable this uh, wide receiver this year. I think it's going back to when, you know, Mike Evans would just catch that touchdown every once in a while. But last year, Mike Evans was reliable and touchdowns. And now I think we're going back to Mike Evans just catching big touchdowns every other game or something. Yeah, well, I don't. Mike, Mike Evans has never had a 100 reception year. As right. in his ten years that he's been here, Chris Godwin has. So he's definitely now he's back in his comfor- uh, comfortable spot of the slot. He's going to be a PPR god this year. <laughs> then Jason through Thursday night football, only two quarterbacks have scored twenty fantasy points. If that holds, it'll be just the second time since two thousand eleven where only two quarterbacks scored twenty plus fantasy points in a given week, and there were no buys this week. Everything before that was with buys. So right now, quarterback play is at its worst. Um, dude, I mean, I, I, I was pushing Caleb Williams, Jason, and that was, I didn't under that offensive line has taken such a step back. I did not see that. I was afraid of Shane Waldron, but I thought at least they would just throw the ball more and things would kind of stay the same, man. They have taken a huge step back. Uh, what the fuck was I even talking about, dude? What was I even talking about, Jason? Oh, quarterback, quarterback play. Yeah, quarterback play in general, man. I mean, Brock Purdy's getting held down right now. I mean. Just not a lot of, and then you saw Anthony Richardson, man. He uh, went from boom to bust. So, yeah. well, I mean, with Anthony, Anthony Richardson can't throw the ball. That's the thing. You just pray that he doesn't get three interceptions a game. <laughs> That's the thing because he likes to throw it to the other team. But he also, you know, he had like four drops too. He throws the ball so damn hard. I don't think the wide receivers ever want to catch the ball. But yeah, I hear you, dude. Caleb, uh, Caleb Williams last night. That dude was getting hit. Every play, every play so that wanna, he would get hit. Yeah, and I do want to say, um, in this landscape, Jason Sam Darnold is looking pretty good, especially since, uh, uh, dude Puka or Puka Nakua, because I was pushing Matthew Stafford, man. I think I'm going to try to get Sam Darnold this week, and then, um, Jason, I do want to say, oh, Amari Cooper leads the Browns with 17 targets this season. He has caught five of those for 27 yards. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm still. I would still try to trade for him to put him on my bench, but because I, I just thought that was getting crazy. the targets. I mean, eventually, you know, an easy matchup. I think you would hope they would finally hit. But if I could trade for him and put him on my bench and use him when I need to, oh, I would. I wish I had him over fucking Christian Kirk right now. For God's sakes, holy yeah, shit! Yeah, but uh, people don't like to look at their apps when there are trades involved. So, so I was like, okay, I, I get it. I thought you were talking about me, man. But there's people. Hey, man, are you one of those people in your leagues that do not respond? If you like it, if you don't like a trade, you just let it marinate, man, until it goes away, disappears. You don't reject it. You yeah. don't even try to like, you know, what's it called, Jason? Rebuttal it or whatever. Right. Um, you know what I do? I cancel it and send it again. <laughs> Maybe you didn't see it the first time. Anyways, that's, Jason, Brock that's Purdy. That's what you're leading me to believe. Go hey, on, man. Tyler. Bro- <laughs> I'm getting upset. Say? I'm getting upset. Go on. Okay. Well, this uh, this should make you happy. Brock Purdy, Jason. We talked about his, uh, you know, him regressing. Man, like his efficiency rates were insane last season. He entered the season, the, entered the season with a career touchdown rate of seven percent. That's pretty damn amazing, dude. Um, and then he's got a touchdown rate of one point five percent this year. So things are not breaking his way. 
Um, he's not on this list, Jason, I don't think, but I would try to trade for Brandon Ayuk. Debo is injured. Ayuk is just pissing his owner off right now, man. Uh, if you can get Ayuk right now, I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah, I put on Reddit about the uh, the injuries to Cooper Cup and Ayuk, and people were really just letting loose on the whole Ayuk thing. But if you're gonna, if you're, uh, people were like, <laughs> they had Coop and I and Debo, and they're like, there goes my first two wide receivers in the first like four rounds, gone. Yeah, it sucks. But if you were thinking about sitting him, I think now is actually the time that you 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 should feel confident in playing him. Debo's gone. He had ten targets last game, so those are gonna be split up between. Kittle and uh, Ayuk, and they got the Rams next week. So that cures a lot too. Yeah, I think I think he'll perform next week. And then Jason, Caleb Williams. I hey man, I apologize. I pushed Caleb Williams. He looked really good. He looked really good. And I, the wide receivers and the offensive line, like I said, the offensive line is just I think is the biggest factor here, and that will get better in time. But he has fourteen point six standard fantasy points, Jason, through two games. Through two games last year, Bryce Young had 21 points. So he's got like, you know, a th- 33% less points or whatever than what Bryce Young had last year, and he was a bust. I mean, he's, uh, you know, or you can look at it as Bryce Young had 50% more points than he has, you know, or whatever you want to look at it. Right. That shit's crazy. Uh, so, yeah, man, I pushed DJ Moore, and I still believe in DJ Moore. I think that buy low on him. I don't think it's going to get better in the next couple of games, but you might want to wait a couple of games. You can buy even lower on DJ Moore. And then uh, Jason, last up. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Jalen Warren saw his rushing share go from 7.7% week one to 32.1% in week two. He played the same number of snaps as Najee Harris against the Broncos. Are you feeling better about him? I mean, I didn't expect him to get a lot of rushing done in the first week. He was coming from, coming back from a hamstring. Dude, that's so funny. We'll talk about this in a second because I was like, people forget that he's coming off of this already because all the comments are like, Doug, oh my God. And it's like, dude, he was injured. Yeah. You know what the one thing that you want from the from the, um, from the the Steelers right now are running backs? That's probably about it. Yeah, so if he would have had 7% you know, running back share this week, then I definitely would have been concerned. But yeah, they, they put him back in there and he was in for a uh, dry. I think, I mean, what do you get, like, Nine, seven points? I can't quite remember, but... Hey, man, yeah. the Eagles scored, Jason. Oh, did they? Yeah. Devontae Smith? Did... Uh, is that what it was? I don't know. I'm going to look right now. Like a trade target, Jason. That might, that might be something. I don't even know what it is. They're going to be like... Devontae oh, Smith like- scored. Are you serious? Yeah, Devontae Smith. Oh, shit, dude. I think, oh, you know, oh, man, I thought I was going against Devontae Smith, but maybe I'm not. All right, man. I do want to point out, we are watching the Manning cast. They got the lowest ratings ever last week. Uh, people were talking shit. They say that it sucks. They have too many celebrities on there. You can't even pay attention to the game. I know. Yeah. Is that true, Jason? I never watched them. I, I mean, I get tired of seeing Eli Manning's face just in one, like, expression the entire time he just yeah. goes i mean i really liked it in the beginning but then you know uh i felt like it was taking up too much of my screen i think they shrunk their shit down a little bit i do think it's funny when it makes fun of pain manny's head though oh dude i it's, love five head, head jokes size. man yeah all right dude let's get into some trade targets trade four jason and i do want to mention this guy since we just talked about him I know that you own Jalen Warren. Would you trade Jalen Warren? Like I said, he, some so there's you know certain websites have whatever, forty four percent snap count, or if you look at other ones, it's a fifty percent snap count. But still, dude, going up nowhere but up. If you give me that fifty, and he's he is the more dynamic runner, Jason. Uh, you saw what uh, Tyler Algier did last year. Najee went from fifty eight. Oh yeah, to forty eight week one. Oh yeah, wait. He went from 58 snaps to 48 snaps, so he had 10 less snaps. But how would you feel about trading for Jalen Warren right now? Um, trading for him, um, I don't know yet. I don't think so. Really? I like to, I will, well, I would like to see Steelers actually put some points on the board. <laughs> Dude, I just know they're going to run the fuck out of the ball. I just know they're going to run the ball. They're going to continue running the ball. That's all I that's all I know. And I, like I said, dude, running backs are going down left and right. So I'm just like all these guys are making me want them. All yeah. right, Jason. 
uh, Najee Harris and Jalen Warren both finished with seven points in full PPR uh, last week. Right. And then, you know what? Next week they go up against uh, the Chargers. And we see how their defense has been. Well, they've, they've, the Chargers have been so lucky to go against, I mean, the Raiders and then uh, Carolina. And then they get Pittsburgh. Jeez, dude. They're, they were set up for success, Jason. Let's put it that way. And uh, so Jalen Warren's a, a, a maybe. Me, if I could just give, if, dude, if you could do like a two for one for Jalen Warren, just like some bullshit or whatever. Um, I would try to do that. I should have some names in here, but I don't. Uh, Jason, would you try to trade for Jamar Chase right now? He had Christian Gonzalez week one. He only had that six targets, like 60 yards. McDuffie week two, man. He got he had a, one of the worst weeks he could possibly have. But the more important thing is that uh, Joe Burrow looked better. That team looked better. Uh, you can see Jamar Chase being a top-tier wide receiver in the second half of the year. Would you give up a lot to get him right now? A lot? I think he might be a buy low right now, right? Yeah, I know. I don't know if but I would need like, to give up a lot for him. Oh, dude. Oh, my God. Uh, you, I was just saying, what? What? I was, I'm, no, I, was like, I was like, what are some fantasy wide receivers right now that are overperforming? You know? Like, um, I mean, you wouldn't give up Garrett. Would you give up Garrett Wilson for Jamar Chase? No. Okay. That's interesting. I'll do this right now. Uh, trades for these players. Put in Jamar Chase. Oh my gosh! There's like, <laughs> there's like crazy like four players for two. We got Jamar Chase straight up for Jaden Reed. We got what Austin no. Eckler, Jamar Chase for Stephon Diggs and Rashad White. So Stephon Diggs, Jason, would you trade? If would you trade Stephon Diggs plus you know somebody on your bench plus for Rashad White? For no, no, no. Plus, not Rashad White. I wouldn't trade Rashad White and Diggs. Would you trade Rashad? Would you trade Rashad White for uh, Jamar Chase? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Would you trade? Yeah, ETN, would you trade ETN for Jamar Chase? Yes. <laughs> Dang, dude. Hmm. This is crazy shit. All right, now you got Jamar thinking, Chase man. for Jonathan Taylor. Who for Jonathan Taylor? Jamar Chase for Jonathan Taylor. That happened. That happened earlier today in one of these things. I would keep Jonathan Taylor, Jason. Yeah, all these trades I'm mentioning actually happened today in the fantasy world. Okay, two more. Jamar Chase for Brandon Ayuk. I'm I'm keeping Jamar Chase. I mean, it's the same situation, but with one with way more upside. Okay, Jamar Chase or Jameer Gibbs. I'm keeping Jameer Gibbs. Jameer okay. Gibbs has been getting thrown a lot, a lot, uh, thrown around a lot. Jason, there was a trade. Um, somebody threw it up on Reddit. It was, would you trade J.K. Dobbins for Jameer Gibbs? Dude, <laughs> I don't know, man. So J.K. Dobbins is actually doing really well right now, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like definitely a trade target. Uh. The way he's running, though, do you think he's going to make it through the whole year? <laughs> Dude, I, I, did, I, I thought he'd be dead by now. So <laughs> I feel like he, he I gets to 20 yard rushes and then he's like dying, dude. He's getting caught by behind and he, I don't know, man. That kind of scares me. He seems like a runner that eventually he's going to just be run out of gas by like week 12, week 13. So I'm kind of terrified about that. So, and you wouldn't trade Chris Godwin, right? For, uh, for, for, you wouldn't trade Chris Godwin for Jamar Chase. No, absolutely not. Rashi Rice for Jamar Chase? No. No, 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 no. Rashid Shahid. Yes. AJ, what about AJ Brown? Uh, oh, that's a good one, Tyler. Would I trade? <laughs> that's your threshold. That one's pretty tough. I think I would go with... Chase. I think Chase got nowhere nowhere to go but up from here. And he's like, you just got to wait for him to get in football shape. Right? Joe Burrow looks like he might be back. The way he played against uh, the Chiefs this weekend, we just got to get Jamar Chase there. Yeah. So, yeah, our, our pick down mark, we could. Yeah, if you could package a couple people. I mean, I, I like Zay Flowers. I keep on thinking throwing Zay Flowers in for him. But I was like, dude, I would just, I'd still keep Zay Flowers, man. Um. All right, Jason. Um. I do want to, since you have Derrick Henry, if you did not have Derrick Henry right now, I would literally be trying to trade my ass off for Derrick Henry. 
TD in each week, but all I hear is um, disappointment, dude. Like everybody's talking shit, and I look at his points. I'm like, dude. He, I mean, he does well. I get it in the fourth quarter. He's not on the field, so he must be super frustrating right now. His owners are super frustrated. How do you feel about that right now? So this is what's happening with Derrick Henry, and this is the most frustrating part, right? We're thinking that he's going to be getting the ball around like 15 to 20 times, 25 times a game, but he runs it on first down, and then Justin Hill comes in. Justice Hill. Just, Justice Hill comes in, and hopefully they get a first down because if not, they're punting. Right. So he so right now, if he's only getting about like three yards of carry, you know, in the first <laughs> half, he's only in there for first down, and then they take him out. It's like and the that, same situation that, as last year, dude. You're just like, pro, he needs to be in there. But he was in there a lot more in the second half. They need – they need. that's probably what we're going to see here. We're probably going to see them try to build that lead in the first half, and then in the second half, just run it with Derrick Henry. Yeah, I mean, I just – I think it's going to develop over time. Like, I'm, I'm super confident in Henry still. Um, would you let me trade you ETN for Henry? Why would you ask me that? I'm just asking. No. <laughs> Get out of here, dude. Would you trade Jamar Chase? Would you trade Henry for Jamar Chase? No. No. Okay. How many running backs have back-to-back weeks with touchdowns right now? I, that's a good that's what i'm saying dude like he's gonna get a touchdown again like that's his floor is like a 10 point touchdown yeah touchdown 30 yards man like it's floor um yeah and then jason ravens man they got to fix their play calling they this is not the same team from last year at all it looks bad it looks bad to be a raven well and well it's a lot of their offensive line i just checked the, uh their their run block win rate for they were ranked 22nd jason and so they're usually top five by the end of the year, man. They will get it figured out. I just, I believe in their coaching and everything there. Um, well, didn't their uh, offensive lineman coach pass yeah, away? It was something like he, that. But, but yeah, I just, I'm just like, that's like the one organization I'm just like, dude, they're like, they've got to figure it. Ozzie Newsome left. They still figured it out, man. It's just like, they just keep on doing it. Okay. But yeah. you are right, Jason. Cause when I, as soon as I said that, I was like, I think they have something to happen to their offensive line coach. Yeah. He died. <laughs> the wrong kid. The wrong coach died. The wrong coach died. Yeah. <laughs> the wrong kid died. <laughs> uh, and then Jason, uh, people on Reddit are freaking out. They're saying, what should I trade away Tyree Kill for? Uh, you know, six targets, 24 yards. Um, I get it, dude. Tua out for who knows how long. But everything coming out today, dude, leads me to believe that Tua will be back in the next Three, I don't even think he's going to go to IR, Jason. I think he's going to be back in like two or three weeks. Uh, and yeah. then they've got Skylar Thompson that's targeting maybe 15 times, maybe seven times. One, that's that's the three out of the three games, you know, like seven was his floor. So if I could, uh, you know, if I had Jamar Chase, and I, I, would try to t- I would try to trade Jamar Chase for Tyreek Hill. That's two fucked up situations. Uh, but at least one's got his quarterback. Um, I don't know. I would try to put together a two for one for Tyreek Hill because I'm sure the owner, some owners out there are freaking out about the Tua. And the Skylar Thompson situation. Yeah. Um, if this guy's still going to get 15 targets. I mean, dude, we talked about it last week, man. The Bills do great against Tyreek Kill. It's like the number one team that play, or the best defense against Tyreek Kill like every year. So, yeah, he had a down game. But do you know who they play next week? There's no. a good chance that he could bounce back if he's getting 15 targets. Who is it? No, I was just curious. Oh, you made me sorry. I usually write it down, dude. I was working all the way up until this on this, man. I was like, I've got no time. Uh, what but college Jason, did uh, Skylar Thompson go to? Thomas go to? Thomas. What school? What college, bro? USC, probably. Kansas State. You can't I draft him. I thought you were Oregon State. And I was like, God damn it, dude. You can't draft him. Can't draft him. Hey, Jason, yeah. uh, real quick, I do want to say Keon Coleman, he led that team on targets, um, you know, week one. One target, zero receptions week two. I think that you can trade for him. I think I might. Um, I think he might have had Jalen Ramsey, but I did, I did not. I was not able to watch any tape on that. So keep your eye out. If you want to try to trade for Keon Coleman, I think now is the time. And then Anthony Richardson as well, Jason. People were talking about trading for, but I don't care, dude. Your Anthony Richardson just got quarterback one week one. He's You're going to need a couple bad weeks in a row to get him. Oh, dude, this is, this is what you're going to – he's not going to put up those uh, week one numbers every week. I thought he actually had a good matchup this week and he was going to do well, but turns out that's not how it always works. Um, Tyler, Jonathan Taylor went out at the end of that game. Did we hear about any injuries with him? No, um, no, there was a couple of, uh, 
injured running backs at the end of the game that it's all everything i've heard as that has not been that big of a deal but yeah i saw what you i I saw that too jason i've been waiting for something to pop up the only well you know uh, pacheco's was a big deal there was somebody else man that had a oh rashad white his groin so um, yeah that was first quarter but apparently that's not going to be a big deal and then jonathan taylor but i have not seen anything about that me either i just thought it was really weird like in the fourth quarter when they were doing their drive they uh they didn't have him in there all right jason trade away man etn i've talked about him like 10 times man i am an etn owner he got a touchdown a rushing touchdown and jason i sent you i was like where's bigsby dude where is bigsby dearness johnson was in there and he was still doing better than tank uh, than um than etn dude tank bigsby got, got blown up check it out on the youtubes man like <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it was the first kickoff yeah. of the game jason that fool i don't it looked like his helmet went flying 100 yards um but he did not play the rest of the game he got Fucked up. So Tank Bigsby owners, that's what happened there. ETN owners take advantage. I'm going to try to trade him away for. I have no idea, dude. I'm going to try to package him and get a running back. Yeah, maybe I Jonathan think, Taylor. I'll try to get Jonathan Taylor, dude. I didn't think uh, humans were supposed to fall that way, dude. This shit was crazy. I wish I could get Derrick Henry, man. That's like the only running back I have on here. Yeah, he's probably more a plastic Tank Bigsby now than. <laughs> and then uh, Jason. Uh, Ridley, dude, 70, he had a 77 yards, but he had a receiving touchdown and a rushing touchdown. And the passing touchdown was, uh, had a 16.5% completion probability. That is the most improbable completion of Will Levis's career. And Ridley had like 0.0 something yards of separation from Sauce Gardner on that play. Take advantage, dude. I mean, Ridley is the only target there. You'll get some points, but you're never going to get his stats looking like this, dude. So if you can trade away Ridley, Jason, yeah. this is the week to do it. I went up against him this week, and I and I saw. Did you see the replay? Did you see the touchdown? Um, no, I didn't even get this. I saw the little. I was on. I was on um Twitter, and they did the little. I saw a digital version of it with dots. <laughs> yeah, Sauce Gardner. <laughs> I think he was like covering him so well and so far downfield. I don't even think he would believe in a million years that Levis would have thrown that ball. And he did make a great catch. I mean, there was two defenders there. Uh, yeah, I think Luck was a little bit on his side for that one, but sometimes that's what you need. But I'm still – I mean, you should see all the memes coming out with Levis, dude, to like <laughs> week one, how he he was like on his hands and knees with his head on his helmet. <laughs> He's like, ah! And then this week, like he went – he fumbled the ball in like the the red zone, and he straight up Superman, like, every, like levitated on that ball. <laughs> yeah they're making memes out of this guy right now all right jason Uh, another two more tradeaways jerome ford only seven rushes to deonta foreman's 18 dude but he got but he got 64 yards with it and um what he ran he only ran 11 routes so you're like hoping he's that pass catching well dude he ran 36 routes in week one so chubb will eventually be back do yourself a favor if you could package ford with Ridley and get somebody, dude. Like, oh my God, Ford is a perfect package person uh, to throw on because he's a he's a name that we know got drafted, you know, in the middle rounds. Uh, but yeah, oh, and Deontay Foreman had all of the red zone carries, every single one, with the thirty eight percent snap share, Jason. So if you could trade away Jerome Ford, I mean, he averaged nine yards a carry, Jason. That's not going to happen many off very often. No, that's pretty crazy. And then uh, lastly, Jason, Rashad White, I would try to trade him away. Everybody knows that he's doing bad. He did suffer that groin injury. Hopefully it's not a big deal and you can trade him away. 15 rushes for 31 yards, and he did have those six targets, Jason, week one. 10 rushes for 18. Dude, this guy's averaging like under two yards a carry with only one target. So, yeah, Bucky Irving, man, is the person to own over there. Can I say something about that real quick? Yeah, go for it. So on coach speak, Todd Boyles is – Bowls, so Bowls, 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 yeah, he, uh, he mentioned how Rashad is still his number one guy right now, and he, they were talking about, like, the explosiveness of uh, Bucky Irving, and he was talking about how <laughs> the line for the Buccaneers were able to m- make holes for uh, Irving, but not Rashad White, I don't know, it was some crazy stuff that had me thinking, I was like, damn, dude, they really believe in this. Rashad White, right? Or they now. just don't want to. They don't want to ruin his confidence. Maybe, yeah. 
like, oh, it, you know what? Like it's just uh, it's not him. You know, it's me. It's not you. It's you. <laughs> but yeah, his ah. running metrics are not looking any better than last year. Yeah, well, we'll talk about here in about ten minutes. All right, big dog, Jason, ready? Yeah, let's do this. Hey, happy late birthday to your dad. I think I already gave him a happy birthday anyways. Wrote him on Facebook. He wrote me back. Ah, nice. Jason, smash, yeah. all right, dude? We got a smash here. We got a Bako boy. I've talked shit about him, dude, and this guy is on fire. Should I pick this guy up and not Sam Darnold? Probably, dude. Probably. So uh, this is Derek Carr we are speaking about, and Jason, he played your Cowboys. Please take the floor. I wish I didn't have to. I wish I could sit this one out, but... uh. All right, so Derek Carr, he was rejected 14 points, and he finished with 27. He has 243 passing yards, two touchdowns, and one interception, and he also had a rushing touchdown that game. He had a 68% completion percentage and only threw the ball 16 times. And as long as Eric completed distance was 54 yards, which turned into a 70-yard touchdown from Rashid Shahid. The Cowboys did not have an answer for the Saints. Their offense looked smooth as hell, and Carr has scored more than 24 points and back-to-back weeks. All these Saints do... Wait, what did I say? All these Saints... Uh, oh, and these Saints do not look like the same team as last year. Of course not. Uh, Carr played the Eagles this upcoming week, who gave up 19 points to Jordan Love last week. That's not talking about tonight's game right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm doing all this stupid shit. Jason, I've got some tidbits, man. I pulled off of all the all the full-time fantasy analysts, analysts doing the crazy numbers. Okay. The Saints have run play action on 45% of their dropbacks, Jason, per next-gen stats. That's the most of the in, in, in football. So play action is Shana Hanahan. You know what that's like. Last year, dude, that was at 13%. So this is a totally, totally different offense. I think we under mess, es, this time we under mess, estimated this offensive coordinator. The Saints have scored, Jason, on all 14 of Derek Carr's drives this year. It is Clint, uh, Clint Kubiak. So Gary Kubiak's son. And then the Saints rookie offensive tackle, that Fuaga, Talisi Fuaga, 44, uh, 44 pass blocking snaps, zero pressures allowed. Jason, the Saints have always had a good offensive line. It looks like they've got it again. And they are running a ton of play action that is apparently helping Derek Carr. I, I don't think he's going to be as bad. I mean, it's stupid to say this now. Obviously, he's not going to be as bad as he usually is. But I mean, I think he's going to be taking like, he's going to be better than Jared Goff. And other, I don't know, dude. What Gino and and uh, Matthew Stafford is he gonna maybe even he's gonna be in the Baker Mayfield category now? I have no idea, dude. I got a little stat from your pros. I would like them to answer this: How has he been able to score in all fourteen of his drives when he's thrown an interception? He, Saints have scored on all fourteen of Derek Carr's drives. Hey, that's a uh, Zachariah or Zach. What Zacharyson? What's his God? Yeah, JJ Zacharyson. JJ Zacharyson. He, he's never wrong, man. That's uh that's where I got it from. I'm gonna send him a very mean and large font email. About Was it a this. pick six? Because technically that's a score too. Oh shit. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of <laughs> funny though. Um, Tyler, what what do you need in order to have good play action? A good run game, I know. And that's yep. and, and look what look how it's been the last two weeks. Well, Kubiak, dude. What do you think when you think Kubiak? I think uh, Arian Foster and whoever the fuck, dude, coming out here and just running for 100 yards. Yeah, Arian Foster. Vegan. Long live Arian Foster, man. Hey, right, he, was in that, uh, he was also drafted on that movie, The uh, what's that, Draft Day? That terrible movie with um, Kevin Costner? Oh, really? Was he in there? I guess I wasn't paying attention to that. That's funny. He's like the main dude. Uh, he's like the, I think, I can't remember. Anyways, man. Um, next up, Jason, this guy right here. He was running back three in points per game last year. He was a savior to my team, man. I was dominating with him. And then the clusterfuck happened at the end of the year with Taysom Hill. And I don't even remember, dude. There was like three people running the ball. And he was not getting any play. But this is a different offensive coordinator. I mean, and this offensive coordinator in the past is like bell cows. I thought I was going to see a lot more Jamal Williams, Jason. A lot more Taysom Hill. Uh, AK-47 out here, dude. Out here looking pretty good. Yeah, let's just stick with the same name or same game. Now we're going to talk about Alvin Kamara. He was projected 15 points, and he finished with 47 points. 20 rushes, 115 yards, three touchdowns, and two receptions for 65 yards and a touchdown. 
on three targets, has four total touchdowns with a long touchdown reception of 57 yards. I say that because in, in our league, we get bonuses for every touchdown further than 50 yards. He averaged 5.8 yards per carry. That's 1.01 rushing yards over expected per attempt. And he did this while seeing eight men in the box 45% of the time, Tyler. 45% of the time. Oh God. He had eight men in the box. And this dude, 5.8. Yards per carry. Uh, that is the second highest percentage this week. He looked like vintage Camara. It looked easy to him when he was running. His long touchdown, it looked like he was running in slow motion, like he wasn't even trying. The offensive he line appears to have been improved a lot by last since last year. Right now, Camara leads the league in rushing with 198 yards and is averaging 5.7 yards per carry. Next week, they play the Eagles, who allowed... Seven yards they carry to the Packers. And let me just check this real quick. I have this up right here. And right now they're giving up seven yards of carry to B. John Robinson. Yeah, dude. Um, so I, I owned Alvin Kamara. I, I saw him a preseason, man. Drafted him, and he paid off big. I think I got second place or first place that year. Had him last year, and it worked great until the end. But I think that... I think that I, I, you know, when you let players that just pissed you off so bad, Jason, I think I let that into my head too much. I should have thought more about this offensive coordinator, but Jamal Williams, I still be seeing a factor maybe later on in the year. And I do want to say, Jason, Kamara had a 60% rush success rate, including four runs of 10 plus yards. Uh, that's an explosive run. So four explosive runs, dude. Holy shit. All four big runs came on outside runs to the left side of the formation. So yep. if you were playing Madden, Jason, and you, uh, Remember to shift everything to the left, left, left. Woo! Who cares if it's that red block? Run at it anyways. LB left. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, this was a trade target last week, Jason. Marvin Harrison Jr. Jr., what is the best Indiana Jones? It is the last crusade. Do not argue with me. I have not Ooh. watched like the, the last three or two. Whatever all the new ones are. But still, last crusade, Jason. You don't like Temple of Doom? Da -dun Dude, I used to when I was a kid, I was like, I would like cry, man. People are pulling people's hearts out. I'm like, oh my god, is it that easy? Like, I'm, like protect my chest, man. Andy, protect your heart. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 okay. So Marvin Harrison Jr. He projected 14 points and he finished with 33, four receptions, 130 yards, and two touchdowns on eight targets. He led the team in targets and receiving yards, and he was second in. Oh shit. Oh, sorry. He led the team in receptions and receiving yards, and he was second in targets behind Trey McBride-Zilla. His expected yards after catch was 4.5. This was a complete 180 from the previous week. He had a run after the catch that turned into a 60-yard touchdown and a toe tap in the back of the end zone for a 23-yard touchdown. He had another end zone targeted, but Murray overthrew him, so he almost had three touchdowns on the day. He was a part of a lopsided win versus the Rams. Next week, he is home against the Lions, who allowed Godwin seven receptions, 117 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, dude. So Marvin Harrison Jr., I was just talking about this. Uh, They're like, go check out uh, go check out uh, Justin Jefferson's first three games. And it was like, yeah, dude, it was like 20 yards, 40 yards, 125 yards every game until the fucking end. So... Uh, yeah, Marvin Harrison Jr. fans expect him more. And, you know, Kyler Murray didn't look his way. He was staring him down, Jason, like the first half of the, the first quarter. Like the, that, they were like, we're throwing to Marvin Harrison Jr. no matter what. And that touchdown at the end of the, at the back of the end zone, Jason, his ball skills are pretty damn amazing. And we talked about how he only ran 16 miles an hour last week. Jason, he maxed out at 20 miles an hour this week. That was like the second fastest for rookies. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. became the first rookie with at least four catches, two touchdowns in the first quarter of a game since his father, his Faja, in his 1996. Father. He loves gold! I'm your Faja. Tyler, I, right. guess, I guess you run faster when you have a defender chasing you. All right, man. Next up, this guy was... Let's shoot. I, I think he's been on my waiver wire show for two years running ever since we started this show, Jason. I'm like, dude, if this guy's healthy, he's a top, top eight tight end play every week. Blah, 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 blah. Well, now with Jacoby Brissett, Jason, he's the best quarterback to come through there in a while. I've always, dude, Jacoby Brissett can support one fantasy receiver. And guess who this, guess who he's going to support, Jason? Hunter 
Henry, uh, I, I with those two injured tight ends before the uh, before the week, I forget who it was. It was Ferguson and Evan Ingram. I was yeah. going through a list, and I did say I like Hunter Henry, Jason, a little bit. I went over like five people, so you got to be right sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, we could talk about this a little bit more. He was projected seven points, and he finished with nineteen. He had eight receptions, 109 yards, and on 12 targets. He led the team in receptions, yards, and targets. I think this might be a good case uh, or a case of a good tight end matchup. The Patriots wide receiver consists of Thornton, Douglas, and Ricky Polk, and they were going against Tyreek Woolen, Devin yeah. Witherspoon, and Trey Brown for Seattle. So I don't think there was any – I don't think there was a better option out there besides Henry for this game, and he took advantage of it. Well, like, I always like him to catch a touchdown. And that fool got, like, 11 targets with no touchdowns. So, like, that was tripping me out. When I was watching, I was like, dude, this guy, is, this guy usually gets three touchdowns, you know, two touchdowns on three targets, shit like that. That's what I, and he, like I said, he was second, Jason, in the league last year with six receiving touchdowns. Oh, my God. Didn't I write something about this guy? Oh, here we go. He saw a 50% target share against the Seahawks and is now leading all tight ends across the league in target share. Nearly 43%, Jason, of New England's targets have gone to the tight end. That is the league high. So they are the Falcons from last year. And now, and then they put, they're going to uh, the Jets for Thursday night football. They'll be in New York. Yeah, buddy. All right, man. Those yeah, are, buddy. Yeah. And those are the smashes. And I just want to say, I am not trying to trade for. I would still try to trade for Harrison for reason for reasonable stuff, but dude, I'm not trying to trade for any of these guys. Uh, you're gonna overpay for it. You're gonna pay, overpay for Alvin Kamara. Right. So, yeah. You really don't want to get. You really don't. You're paying a top of dollar, dude, for these smashes right now. That's not what you want. You want the crashes, man. Except for this crash, Jason. You know what's first, right? Um. Hold on. Shoot. I know who's first. I was checking the score. Yeah, I know who's first. We were just talking about this guy earlier. Yeah, dude, this guy's head needs to be way bigger. His body needs to be bigger. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It, Bryce Young, dude, like, like I said, I mean, it's hard to feel. It, it's hard to get to the point where you feel bad for somebody that's making a million dollars a play, but it happens a lot. With when I, when I saw him almost crying, dude, I felt bad for him. Yeah, he's he's got it tough, so. Bryce Young projected 14 points, and he finished with Uno. 18 for 26, 84 yards, zero touchdowns, and one interception. He also rushed for six yards. A 69% completion percentage, which is good, but his average attended air yards was three yards. His longest completion and air distance was 23 yards. Both are bottom two of week two. He isn't getting enough time for the play to develop. His time to throw is 2.25 seconds. It's the lowest in week two. And things will get better. They're at the Raiders next week. You know, the Panthers were first, or the, the, uh, the Panthers were only one out of 12 on third down conversions. And they only possessed the ball about 23 minutes in last week's game, or this week's game. I know they play an improved defense from the Chargers, but damn, bro. The Panthers look like they've gotten worse. Yeah, so uh, that's why they made the change, man. They need to evaluate that entire team. They can't even they can't evaluate the wide receivers. They can't evaluate anybody with him back there because, like I said, he had the lowest pressure rate of the week, and he had he's he's just getting worse, man. So he needs to sit back and watch somebody else do it from the sidelines for a while. He needs to change team. He needs to change scenery and all kinds of shit, dude. But it's funny because yeah. uh, the Carolina Panthers, Jason, Sam Darnold playing amazing. I'm talking about picking him up. Baker Mayfield playing amazing. I wish I had him. So maybe it's not all I'm Bryce Young, but he's looked worse than anybody else, dude. They they put him up against um, who was that huge? He's the all time bust, Jason, for the Raiders. That that huge dude with the Jamarcus with the, Russell. Yeah, Jamarcus <laughs> Russell and him have like he's got Jamarcus Russell has better stats right now. Oh so, my gosh, don't say that. Oh, it's like eerily similar, but it's it's a. Uh, I'd rather have Jamarcus Russell. Damn. At least Jamarcus Russell took shots downfield, man. This guy can't even see downfield. He had, had a cannon for an arm. I remember that shit, dude. That shit was crazy. And a right, cannon man. for a belly. <laughs> yeah. I, not much to say about Bryce Young because he's not starting anymore. Yeah. Jason, next up, though, Rashad White. In, like I, like we said, he got um, 
He had three carries. He got injured on his third carry. I'm pretty sure from what I read with a groin injury, but I think he is fighting for his life, Jason. He's fighting for his starter job. He's like, don't take me out, coach. I'm not injured. I'm doing fine. You know, he's got his own pain and uh, his pain killer injectors in his back pocket or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Shooting up on the sidelines. Like, Ugh, Lattimore. He's like, I need to keep right. my head. So yeah, Jason, Rashad White, man. So super inefficient for the second for the second week in a row, but he did not get a touchdown this time. Set the table. So Rashad White projected 14 points and he finished with two. 10 rushes, 18 yards, no touchdowns, and he had one reception for five five yards on one target. Baker Mayfield led the team in rushing with 34 yards. Irving was second with 22. So he did leave the game for a period, but he did return. I know the Lions have a good run defense, but his yards per carry was 1.8, and that is a negative 1.25 rushing yards overexpected per attempt. That's the third worst of the week. His running matrix remain as bad as they were last year, but now he has Bucky Irving breathing down his neck. Next week, they are home against the Broncos. They gave up 141 rushing yards to the Steelers this past Sunday. And then uh, here we go, Jason. Here's some good numbers. Let's see. Against Detroit, he had five. He had a 5.3 percent target share. He has now run, but he's now run a route on 64 and 61 percent of Tampa Bay drops back, dropbacks this year. That is similar to what he had last year. He had 65 percent last year. So right now, he's at least running the routes. He's just not getting the targets. His running back rush share has dropped from 76 percent last year about 60% this year, and that is Bucky Irving. So we got Bucky Irving eating into his rushing opportunities, and he's not getting targeted targeted as much, even though he's running the same amount of routes. I think that is the Godwin in the slot, maybe. I'm not yeah. really sure. Good call. Yeah, I was, I was thinking the same thing. Now that Godwin's in the slot and he's able to get open more, he's a guy, yeah, White is now like option number two or three. All right, man. All right, man. Next up. We got a, oh, no, no, Jason. Can't believe we have him here. I took this guy. I took this guy in my first, uh, what, second overall draft pick, man? Second overall draft pick in the Lister League? Can't believe I still won. (laughs) Tyree Kill. Yeah, Tyree Uh, Kill. Yeah, but I do want to point out, Jason, I I remember last week, I was like, dude, he's not doing well. Like, because remember he got pulled out of the car. And everything. He had that one 80-yard touchdown. If it wasn't for that, he would probably, he would have been a bust last week. Yeah, well, that's what you kind of bank on, too, with him. Because they happen so often, you know he can score from anywhere on the field. Uh, he was projected 21 points, and he finished with six. Three receptions, 24 yards on six targets, and one rush for 12 yards. He's He still had a good target average uh, yards with 12. Shit, I think I wrote that wrong. No, his I, targeted, <laughs> that <doesn't make> that. <laughs> I know, his targeted air yards average was 12. And 8.3 expected yards after catch. But he didn't have the volume, and he didn't break off a big play this time around. The Bills are normally good at containing Hill. Tua also did not play well and had to leave the game, so that counts for something. Next week, he's at Seattle, and Seattle held all the Patriots wide receivers, Tyler, to under 15 receiving yards. Yeah, and Tua's not playing, you know. He's going to have a bad week next week, but this is to be expected. And uh, Jason, I do want to give a reason why why he did not do well. It was the, uh, so they're say looking to neutralize the Dolphins' big play offense. The Bills played a split safety coverage on, what, 72% of their dropbacks. That's a, 40, that's a fourth highest mark since 2018 in any game, not just the Bills. And then out of the eight games in split safety usage by the Bills, four have come against the Dolphins since 2022. And uh, they played heavy zone coverage with a four-man pass rush. Blitzing twice all game. So they didn't even blitz, dude. They blitzed twice. It's like me and Madden at the end, man, when it's like I'm up by 30 points. I just hang I just hang back. Yeah. So they played pre they played a totally different type of defense against the Dolphins and Tyreek Hill. And then also Tua, you know, I do think he will be coming back. And like we said about Skylar Thompson, man, there is he he targeted him 15 times. He also targeted him seven times, so you got you have a range there. But I would try to trade for Tyree Kill, man. I know he's on our, you know, this is the one of the crashes that you want to trade for. Yeah, you can maybe get him pretty low right now with two out. Wow. And how he's probably going to have another bad week. I can't see him really putting up Tyree Kill numbers against Seattle, but to- to- totally, <laughs> totally. You're gonna, don't hold hold on, you're going to die. 
What? <laughs> what? Was uh, for, forgetting Sarah Marshall when she, he's hanging onto the cliff? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. But was it, make sure you push off the rocks, or you're going to hit them and die. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it's the best part in the movie, too. All right, man. So Tyreek Hill, you would like to trade for, and then hey, man. We told you this guy's going to bust, man. I told you this guy's going to bust. I already knew the game plan. He is the new. This is like a Shaq and Kobe or the Lakers. Just cruise control. Turn it on for the playoffs. Um, dude, or they, they said Gronkowski used to do this, but even when Gronk was older with Tampa Bay, he was still good in the regular season, man. So Kelsey, taking it easy, Jason. Taking it sleazy. He is not worth, man, he's not worth a 10th round draft pick this year. He will get 100, he'll get 100 yards games in the playoffs and just piss you off he does that is his goal in life um travis kelsey projected 13 points and he finished with oh one point one reception five yards on three targets with no touchdowns last week he had three receptions for 34 yards and no touchdowns of four targets this is becoming the norm for travis kelsey in the regular season Rasheed Rice is the underneath wide receiver for the Chiefs, and Kelsey isn't on the field as much. 2022, he averaged 20, 53 snaps a game. 2023, 51 snaps a game. 2024, 48 snaps. He keeps getting less and less, or fewer and fewer, <laughs> Corian. Um, I just see at one point he had three defenders were covering him, but now because of Rice, the throws to Kelsey are not forced. He's not forcing them into Kelsey. He has Rasheed Rice now. I believe there will be more weeks like this, like the past two. Next week, he faces the Falcons, who gave up six points to Pat Fairmouth last week. And Jason, Jason, the only, only thing I have to say is uh, he's Travis Kelsey has scored fewer than seven PPR points in each of his first two games. He scored fewer than seven PPR points only twice during the 2023 regular season. So he is off to a, even a worse start. Man, he was tied in like, I think he was tied in one or, or three until like week seven or eight last year, he is literally picking up where he left off, man. So not good. If you could trade away Travis Kelsey, he should have been on this, dude. If you could get name value, trade away Travis Kelsey, do it. Do it now. That's good. Yeah, name value. Oh, man, he's just playing it easy till week 10. You got this. Right, man, you can tell you, you're a wife or your girlfriend likes uh, Taylor Swift. Just tell her you're trading for her boyfriend and you guys could talk about it. Yeah. Anyways, Jason, moving forward. All right. Hey, that is the end of the show. Hopefully we earned a thumbs up. Hopefully we earned a subscription. You liking this or subscribing to this pushes the show out to many more people. And that is exactly what this show needs right now. I say that every episode, but seriously, man, exposure is what we need. Please. Uh, Hey, Jason, want to tell them what's coming up? What's going out? Yeah, so we got uh, Thursday's video, Thursday morning's video. Right? Does it come out Thursday morning? Yeah, it's dude. It's our player pause, and we have our yeah. secret starts of the week. Tyler, this is not your job. It's my job. You uh, you said it like you couldn't remember. I just gotta remember. For some reason, today doesn't feel like a Monday to me. So, all right. So, Thursday morning player pause. Our most important video. Make sure to check it, so you will know who to play, who to start, who to sit, and so you can win your week and win your league. I will talk to you in that video. Oh, we also got our live rankings. Sorry, dude. You got so much pressure on me, man. I got my stress and my anxiety is through the roof right now. You're making me forget things, man. I got to get out of here. I'll talk to you guys later. Deuces. All right. Hey, this is the Fantasy Red Zone, and we appreciate you.